Welcome. In this session, we will continue with the CompuPlast Virtual Extrusion Laboratory extruder module and build on the three and a half inch extruder that we've worked on in the last couple of sessions. I'm going to open the last project just to give us a little reminder of the results. In this project, I ran with a uh, calculate RPM solution type to determine the speed that would give me 300 pounds an hour. And the extruder was modified in an effort to reduce the temperature. Now, the speed that was determined that would give me 300 pounds an hour was about 72.5 RPM. And that resulted in a bulk end temperature of about 390 degrees Fahrenheit. The graph across shows us that the maximum temperature in the stream was about 402.7, 403 degrees Fahrenheit. And because the wall temperature is set at 375, the temperature variation appears to be about 28 degrees Fahrenheit. But it is relatively flat compared to the previous design. In this session, I'd like to demonstrate what happens when we simply change a material and keep everything else consistent. For these past simulations and this minor optimization, we did a, a used a 1MI low-density polyethylene. In this case, I'm going to switch to a 1MI linear low-density polyethylene, and I'm going to replace that into the project. And I'm going to leave the simulation under the same condition of calculate the um, RPM given a mass flow rate of 300 pounds an hour that is required. Now we solve this, and we see during the solution the RPM is being reduced, indicating that the linear low density has a better pumping rate than the low density. In fact, the RPM required to reach 300 pounds an hour of linear low density is about 52 RPM versus the 72 RPM we had with the low density. The same head pressure was used with both simulations, and perhaps this simulation should have a higher head pressure because the linear low density is more viscous. The interesting thing here, though, is that the bulk end temperature has increased to about 419 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the graph along here, and you'll see that the uh, bulk end temperature is uh, 419 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you can see that the material just um, barely melted prior to the end of the screw, owing to the higher output rate at the lower RPM. More interestingly is the graph across, which shows the maximum temperature, has reached a value of 436 degrees Fahrenheit. So, um, we can see that simply changing a material in the extruder can have a profound effect on the temperature. Now let's see what happens if I were to run this extruder to achieve 400 pounds an hour. I go back up and I solve, and we'll see that the RPM increases. And we see from this uh, last um, graph that we were looking at that the maximum temperature has increased to 467 degrees Fahrenheit. And the um, graph along the bulk end temperature is 438.5 degrees Fahrenheit. So as you can see from these simulations, simply changing the screw speed to achieve a higher output can have a strong effect not only on the average melt temperature, but the temperature variation leaving the extruder.